so people are right, instant improvement, instantly improving your ball striking. Tommy Fleetwood, is he the best iron player in the world? Why are 99% of the PGA Tour players in this position? We've got some great drills, some great information coming your way in this video. And why is it we're seeing so many of the world's best ball strikers, I mean best ever ball strikers, move their hips towards the ball? I thought this was a mistake. I thought this meant it wasn't possible to hit the ball good from uh, this position. But then again, we're seeing Hall of Famers, some of the best ball strikers ever uh, in this position. Does that mean you still can hit the ball good from here? Uh, another area that we're going to cover later on in the video. So people, amateurs versus professionals. This is the biggest difference in the golf swing, and I'm going to show you how to get in it with two simple drills. Now what we're looking at is the ability to move your hips forwards, Move your legs forwards without your head moving forwards. Now, Tommy Fleetwood, one of the world's best iron players, quite interesting, isn't it? He doesn't have a lot of lag. And watch this position here. See how his head moves slightly back in the downswing as the hips move and the legs move through the wall. Now, amateurs, not unfortunately, just not getting this part right, they're not creating what we call separation. The head moves forwards and then they have to stall the legs. And they're getting themselves in a really, really awkward position. It's not just that. What we're seeing a lot of the time is them, amateurs not moving through the wall and a big gap in between the legs and flipping it. So we're going to have a look at this, the ability to move through the wall. And we're seeing it time and time again, getting the correct side bend here through the golf ball and some basic drills and thoughts. But what does it do to the downswing? This sets off an incredible chain reaction in the direction of the golf club. So people, the perfect delivery into the golf ball. Now, moving your body effectively really helps is deliver that club head perfectly into the back of the ball. See how the club head there is in front of the hands? And see how Tommy Fleetwood's is behind the hands. Now, this is what we're seeing time and time again. It's nothing new. We've seen it for years with the world's best players. The ability to move their body effectively on the way down really assists us in bringing this club head in behind the hands. The closer you get to that position, the better you're going to hit the golf ball, right? And this is the key area in the golf swing. And something that we've been showing people on world-class golf for just so long. So let's move into some really, really interesting drills and how we assist us in helping us to find this position and just hit the ball so much more effectively. So people, separation, transition, the downswing, and not turning too early. Not turning too early. Let's have a look at this drill because unfortunately, there's millions of people getting this wrong all around the world. Before we move on to some other drills and information in the video, let's have a quick look here. This is a great drill, right? We're going to have a look. We pop the hands here. We're going to get about 20 centimeters away from the wall. Pop your palms flat on the wall. And as we move down, we get a stretch here of this lead hip. Now, when the hands move away, see that there's no separation. My top half is turning too early. Really what happens in the downswing as we shift forwards and then we start to turn your bottom half, your hips and your legs, your shoulders are holding back at that initial part of the downswing. They'll catch up later as the hips slow down. But if you're not, if you're getting this right shoulder, if your hands are leaving the wall here, your head's moving forwards and it's causing all sorts of different problems. This is just a great drill to get a feeling of what's happening. Now, obviously you don't need a wall. So guys, right, we don't need a wall. Obviously we can just get there, you know, you get to the top of your swing here and as you move your hands, Imagine there's a wall there, you're just getting a little bit of a stretch here with this lead hip, pick up your golf club, get up to the top of your swing, and you can imagine that wall's there. And this is just that initial move here that we're seeing. This holds this side back, creating separation as we're getting this lead hip to move forwards. So many people are affected by this, with this turning too early with the right shoulder. And this is up and this is high in a awkward position and not being able to move freely through the golf ball. This lateral shift, one of the keys to great ball striking. So guys, right, getting your ribs here to create more separation. This is a really good drill here to get your obliques, the muscles on the side of your stomach, to work under and across. Pop both of your palms on the top of the golf club. And what we're doing is just getting your, your muscles here. We're, we're just pushing this side across, your ribs here, pushing them across without your head moving forwards. Now with the hands on the club, it'll tend to lift up the shoulder a little bit and it'll give you a feeling. Can you see that angle here? 
it's pointed a little bit more towards the lead foot. This is sort of what we're after. We're getting these, these ribs, these oblique muscles to shift. And if you're looking into a mirror or you're filming your swings, you get a feeling of as that shifts, the lead shoulder moves up. And we're getting ourselves into positions here where we're seeing so many great players. We don't need the foot to kick out miles. We just need it to move in. We don't need to turn and twist and spin and leave this right knee over your, your right ankle, or your trail ankle there. Really good drill to get the side of your obliques working here and moving ourselves into a fantastic position to free up your through swing through the golf ball. Now the chain reaction that this has on your golf swing, creating the correct side bend and neck tilt in your finish position is absolutely enormous. You can hit it harder, it helps you deliver the club on the correct path and it controls the club face really, really effective and gives you something to release against. Let's have a look at how we can get into this position, program it so it can really, really improve your ball striking. So guys, that wasn't a bad strike, actually. I'll take that one. You see my finish position here? Not enough done, not enough spoken about, about this end position and the chain reaction it has in your swing. It's not, it's not just about hitting or making it look pretty, right? Keeping your neck tilt. Probably Sam Snead did it the best. You can hit it harder, but it's, it's a, such a great element to have thighs together, right ear down, neck tilt, water dripping out of your ear. Tommy Fleetwood, how good does he do it through the golf ball? Now we can't all swing like Tommy. I know that because of his flexibility, it's unbelievable. What we do, I'm working a lot with Robbie Cannon, who's a, a PGA Tour fitness instructor. We get people, we put them through a screening test online. We see which muscles are short and it's fascinating. You work on them in four, six weeks, you can improve your swing so much. Reach out to me there and I can, I'll put you in contact through the swing analysts as a team it's a, it's a really very productive way to train. Through the golf ball, neck tilt, get yourself in this position here. Swing back, move through, swing back and move through and close your eyes, picking up movements, feelings and sensations. Great way to practice it. Make sure you get your finished position. It also looks good and it helps us move through into the downswing without tipping things over and getting jammed up and stuck and can really, really pick up your speed. So people are moving through the golf ball powerfully and effectively. It's just such a good feeling. And getting this feedback to know exactly where you are, it's essential, right? So how do you know that? How do you get feedback? You gotta film your swing, right? So who's not filming their swings out there these days? There's no top players. So you got your mobile phone, all right? And there's different phone holders. You can get these like monkey grips here. You can get like alignment sticks. You can pop it on a tripod like this. But it's essential because essentially what we're after is the feedback. Now, with online swing analyst training, I'm helping people literally from all around the world. Just send your swing through to me. And uh, your swing analyst goes for 15 to 30 minutes. You get exactly this. Exactly this. It's the exact same format as the YouTube video, except your swing on the screen, right? And uh, we've got 1,400 videos on World Class Golf Instruction, so it, we don't show all of that on YouTube. There's practice programs, there's a community, and you have also through your Swing Analyst unlimited WhatsApp contact with me. You can ask any questions that you want. I can be your coach, we can start today. Guys, right, let's get on the path of playing some better golf. Let's get further on into the video. So people, let's have a look at this because we get so many questions. You know, when we're moving the hips towards the golf ball, we see so many of the world's best ever ball strikers do this, Hall of Famers. So it is possible to do this and still hit the ball really, really good. Obviously, we, we can see it here. We just have to understand a few things. Okay, so let's have a look at Tommy Fleetwood, obviously a wonderful iron player. And you can see he's moving his hips a long way towards the ball, but his head's not lifting up. So early extension, extending early, lifting the head up, that's something different. But moving your hips towards the ball, if you want to hit a draw and you've got this type of weight trace and you're hitting it from the inside, you know, arguably, you need some of this movement. Let's have a look at that now. We see so many great, even Nicholas, so many great ball strikers, you know, hitting a draw off the tee. Now, when we have a look at Jason Day here, we'll just have a quick look at this because we, we've got a weight trace. So Jason draws the ball, and when you see his, his feet here, you see this trace, you see this line here, this white line, this upper line. I'll draw, I'll draw a yellow line on it. We can see that his feet, the weight trace is moving this direction. So it's moving from, from the heel more to the toe. And this is why we see a lot of the players moving the hips towards the ball, especially if they're out there and they're, they're drawing shots. 
Okay, so if you do have a little bit of in your swing like that, you don't necessarily have to take it out. Now, I've seen people try and keep this hip back and they end up really steepening the plane at certain times. So some movement forwards, you, you may need it. Unfortunately, we have some people in the internet telling us to swing like Dustin Johnson. I mean, have a look at that swing. What, have you seen how this guy can bend his body into positions? I mean, look at, look at this line from here to here. And that's just not humanly possible. And so if you want to fade it, you know, keeping the hips back will help you. And if you come in a little bit under plane and you keep this hip back, that can help you steepen the plane. It's a steepening characteristic, guys. So just some of the things that we have on world-class golf instruction, it's not all in YouTube. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.